Hello, this is the Boreal with Black Education TV. As you see, the title of this video is Rise Up or Stand Down. Black people, should we rise up or should we stand down? Now, it's very important that we get this answer right, okay? Um, this video is inspired by a brother who shared a video with me on Facebook where it talked about or it showed how there were different times throughout history, history where our people did rise up and they fought um, the enemy. They fought back and they, they did what they had to do during their time to try to overthrow their enemy. Now, most of you will say, well, what's wrong with that? I want to bring some context to things. OK, this is especially for our people that are still in the land of our captivity. It's very important that we understand this. And I thank the brother for um, sending me the video and kind of nudging me a little to expound on this. Because we see a lot of times where our people, you'll see them in comment sections under certain videos where we're saying, well, we need to do this and we need to do that. We need to fight, fight, fight. Now, the scripture is very, very clear on many things. When you look at historical battles that we've had to fight, the one very important element was the backing of the Most High Yah. When he was behind the battle, you can be assured that there is going to be victory on the other end. <clears throat> now, when we look at all of these uprisings that we've seen in the past, and in no way am I saying that we should be docile. I want you to understand this because many of you hear what you want to hear. Okay. But I want you to hear and understand where I'm coming from. I'm not saying to be docile and to be um, ignorant. No one understand what's going on. But we've got to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We are outgunned and outnumbered. In this country and we have seen that so many things have taken place and have been allowed to take place because of the laws that are in place that ensure that we are not going to get what others are getting. When they say liberty and justice for all, that is not what we are seeing. Those are just words that they've put out there, but that is not what we have been receiving. There has not been liberty and justice for all. And when I think about uprisings of the past, okay, these were our people saying, look, I'm tired of you treating us this way. I'm tired of you killing us and harming us and doing all these things to our women and our children, our young and our old, our men. You're tired. Yes, we are tired. We are tired and we are very frustrated. But when you understand historically why we, were, we are in this place, and why these things are happening, why they are able to do the things that they do, then you can better deal with the situation. And for some of you who do not follow the Bible, you're not going to get what I'm saying. But it's very important that you get what I am saying. And I'm going to do a separate video on this, this, this one thing. But if there is no God, God is what you all call him, what the world calls him. If there is no God, we as so-called black people are finished anyway. We are finished anyway. And like I said, I have to do a whole separate video on that because there is something that needs to be understand, understood. But talking about the whole idea of rising up or standing down. When you are behind enemy lines, think about a real war. They know better the system that they have in place. And to think that you are going to go behind enemy lines and overtake them and you don't have the proper equipment, the proper weapons, the proper anything, it is foolish. And so what you're essentially doing is leading your people into slaughter. When you think of the uprisings, and I'm going to speak of one of the most famous uprisings that we all know about, and that's Nat Turner. Although it may seem to be noble what he did, and for some, he is a hero because he said, look, I'm going to fight back for what has 
taking place against my people, the killing of our children, all of these things. He says, okay, well, I'm going to fight back. That's what Nat, Nat Turner's thinking was. He was a preacher, a minister. Okay. And so he was standing up. He said, look, I'm tired of you all raping our women and killing our children, feeding them to alligators and doing all these kinds of wicked, dirty, rotten things. And so he tried to rally together as many people as he could to fight back. Now, when I say fight back, I want you to understand because there are some wicked devils out here that will try to make it seem like fighting back is wrong. While they're doing things to you, they will say, well, you need to forgive us and you need to pray for us while they're continuing to do their dirt. That is a reprobate mind. You're not going to reach a reprobate. A reprobate is finished spiritually. They're spiritually dead. There is no hope for them. You are not going to reach that kind of person because they have already justified that they can do whatever to you, but you can't fight back according to what's being done to you. They've already justified that in their mind, so you can't reach a reprobate. But um, anyway, fighting back is simply, I've been attacked first, and my people have been attacked, and so we are just going to fight back. They will uh, A reprobate will misconstrue the whole story and say that, oh, you, you've did this or you've did that. They'll try to focus on what you've done but they won't focus on the fact that what you've done is a response to what they have already done and what they continue to do. They won't even recognize or even tie the two together. They will make it seem as though you're fighting back as an original attack against them and not even deal with the fact that it is simply a response to what has been done to you. You see, and they'll wrap the story in whatever way they can to make it seem like you're fighting back or trying to protect yourself or standing your ground is wicked. When you're standing your ground against them, they say, no, their overreaching attack or killing of you, they call that the standing of ground because how dare you try to defend yourself against what I am doing to you? I know you all understand what I'm talking about. Only reprobates don't understand. Reprobates will always justify what they have done. And this is why, this is why it is going to take the Most High Yah to deal with reprobates. The God of heaven. He is going to have to deal with them in some unshakable ways. Unescapable ways. There are going to be things that they are not going to be able to deal with. The world itself, the earth, should I say, is going to turn on them. The world is too. The world consists of the people, but yes, and the system. But yes, when the judgment and the divine power of the Most High Yah begins to shake, rattle, and roll this planet, those who have got away with so much for so long, they are going to know that it's the judgment of the Most High Yah because there will be nothing. <laughs> They can do to stop it. Absolutely nothing. So back to the subject at hand. Should we rise up or stand down? Well, it wasn't just during the times of slavery and even times after slavery where our people rose up and were slaughtered for rising up. Even back in Bible days and biblical times, whenever the children of Israel would rise up without the Father's hand, without the blessing of the Most High God, they were always led into slaughter. Whenever they went to battle on their own because they were angry or because they were upset and they didn't have the blessing of the Most High, he didn't lead the charge. He didn't tell them to do it. He didn't tell the prophets to tell them to do it. Whenever they went out on their own, they were always defeated. Every last time. So literally people just died for nothing. Now you are just a story in history. Because you didn't have an understanding. We have to be wise as serpents. And harmless as doves. 
But when you look at certain battles that the Israelites did win, the children of Israel, let me tell you, there were there was a time where they were to go into this land and the enemy, two separate groups of enemies, came, they wanted to attack the Israelites. But the Israelites, what they did was amazing. They began to praise the Most High Yah before they went to battle. And because they praised the Most High Yah, that praise confused their enemies. And so these two opposing armies, two separate opposing armies, they got there, they saw each other. They were both coming to attack the Israelites, but they ran into each other. And so because the Israelites were praising the Most High Yah, I need y'all to get this family. Praising him, not praising who you are, not praising your awakening, not praising some religion called Hebrew Israelite, because we are not Hebrew Israelites. We are the chosen of the Most High Yah. But anyway, these two enemies, when they ran into each other, they were so confused. The scripture says that they were confused and they began to fight and kill each other. They killed each other, both opposing armies destroyed one another and all of the spoils and the wealth that they left behind in battle was simply gathered up by the children of Israel. They just went through picking up the spoils of war, the, the goods that were left behind while the enemy lie dead in the streets, having killed each other, not touching one Israelite. This is why the scripture talks about being led by the Ruach HaKadosh. It's very important that we are led because in that instant they were led and the praise confused the enemy. The enemy got confused and they killed their own selves. Understand where I'm coming from. So essentially, should we rise up or stand down? We definitely should not rise up because you are not rising up in Yah's power. So, yes, absolutely. Stand down. Now, I'm not talking about in a particular case where someone comes in your house and they're trying to attack your family. They're trying to attack your wife and your children. You defend yourself. If someone comes attacking you on the streets, you have a right to defend yourself. What I'm talking about is when I see all of this rhetoric from our people saying that we need to do this and do that and on a large scale, there is nothing we can do against these people at this moment. These people have more guns. They have more anger and hatred. They have their laws that they have written that they are allowing people to invoke stand your ground in situations where it should not apply. And when our people try to use stand your ground, they won't let you. They are not even obeying their own laws. You see, this is what happens in the land of your captivity. And one thing I need you to understand too, why are we here? I like to make you remember this or cause you to remember this in the first place. Why are we here? For those of you who don't follow the Bible, you're going to say, well, we were brought here on slave ships. Yes, that is true. But did you not know that it was prophesied that this would take place? It was prophesied that we would be brought here on slave ships. That is where we are in the land of our captivity for a period of time. And it says that those that hate us are going to rule over us. That is what's taking place. You can't go anywhere. You cannot move about without their permission. So how is it that you think you can rise up and be victorious? You don't have enough weapons. You can't even drive a car without their permission. So those of you who think that you are, I mean, I've, we've had so many people say so many different things. Not understanding that the chips are stacked against you. Yeah, the chips are stacked against you. I said it. But guess what? If Yah before you, who can be against you? When the Most High raises his hands up against your enemy, there is nothing that can be done. And I don't care what color the enemy is because enemies come in black and white. 
If the Most High Yah, God as you all call him, raises his hand against you, there is nothing that can be done about it. So again, the scripture says, if Yah be for you, or if God be for you, who can be against you? It's letting you know, can't nobody be against you if he is for you. And if your ways be found righteous in the sight of the Most High Yah, even your enemies will be at peace with you. So you got to ask yourself, <clears throat> these things that we see happening in the world today, especially against our people, it is a reason why these things are happening. Because our people are walking in disobedience, contrary to the Most High. And he said, as long as we do that, as long as we walk contrary unto him, as long as we kick against him, as long as we establish our own righteousness and do things our own way, he is going to allow our enemies to overtake us and overthrow us and overmaster us. But if your ways be found right in the sight of the Most High Yah, even those same enemies will be at peace with you. So if you are not at peace in your situation or in your life, if you are in constant turmoil with people, you have to examine yourself. Let a man or a woman examine themselves. Of course, being in the land of your captivity, we are all going to have tribulation. But for the most part, you should not be surrounded by these things in your personal life. Because if your ways be found right in the sight of the Most High Yah, even your enemies will be at peace with you. In a nutshell, family, rising up is foolish at this point. And yes, it may sound brave and noble to say that I would just rather die than to live a certain way. That's a person who's given up and a person who's saying, basically, I don't want to do things Yah's way. I don't want to do things his way. I want to do things my way. But whenever you do things your way, you're headed for destruction. Our way is what got us here in the land of our captivity in the first place. Doing things our way is why we are here. Because of the disobedience of our forefathers, our ancestors, this is why we are here. If our people will begin to do things Yah's way, when the scripture says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. That seems like it's hard for us to do because we're not doing it. Most of our people will not humble themselves because they've established their own wicked righteousness. When you establish things your way, you're not going to be victorious. You're not going to be blessed in your going out and your coming in. You're going to hit one roadblock after the other, one stumbling block after the other, one after the other, because you wanted to do things your way. The scripture says there is a way which seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death and destruction. And while you continue down your wicked path with your own righteousness in your head, doing things your way, we're going to continue to see the same thing happening out here because we are not praising Yah. Our enemies laugh at us. Our forefathers back in the day during that particular battle, because there were many battles, when they talked about how they praised the Most High Yah, that praise confused the enemy, took him out of his game. And they did the work for the Israelites. They didn't have to go in and fight at all. Oh, that men would praise Yah. If we would begin to praise Yah and understand what it means to praise Yah, and not the stuff that we've made up ourselves. We would begin to praise Yah. Let him be glorified in our lives. The enemy would have no. No other choice. 
but to retreat. No other choice. Listen, family. Like I said, I'm not telling us to be cowards. Many of you like to say what you think I mean. I definitely know we have a right to defend ourselves. We have a right to defend our children. We have a right to defend our families. If danger comes upon us, we have that right. That's that's a God-given right, a Yah-given right. That ain't got nothing to do with man. Because you see how man does. You try to defend your family according to their laws, you are wrong. They'll throw you in jail for trying to keep somebody from raping your child. And we know this because it happened in the city of Detroit. There was a pastor, and we've shared this story before, who heard his daughter screaming outside. He ran out there. This man was on top of his daughter, raping her. This man, this pastor, took out his gun and blew that devil away. And he ended up spending 10 years in prison for protecting his daughter. Now, we all know that if that were a white pastor or just a white man, period, who was protecting his daughter from somebody who was raping her, we all know that that man would have walked free. But you see, I want y'all to understand and be encouraged by this, that the, the unfair treatment that we are receiving, oh, karma, as they call it, it is going to visit them. They're going to have to pay for all of these things. All of these injustices that they think they've gotten away with, it's not going to, uh-uh. No, no one gets away with anything. When they stand before the Most High Yah on Judgment Day, and some of them are going to be judged right here on this earth, but when they stand before him, it is not going to be pretty. Many of them live, have what they consider to be good lives, not realizing that this life is just a vapor. Eternity is a lot longer than the time you get here on this earth. You think a hundred years is a lot of time? No, that's not a lot of time. You might live to be a hundred, a hundred and one, ninety six, ninety two. It doesn't matter. When it's all said and done, where will you spend eternity? So you think you can get away and keep, continue to do these things and be unfair. Even though the Most High has allowed what he's done, he's, he's removed his hand of protection as a whole from his people. As a whole, because there are individuals that the Most High, like I said, if your ways be found right before Yah, even your enemies will be at peace with you. But as a whole, the Most High's hand of protection has been moved until we do certain things, until we line up with his word and with his will. You see, when we do that, our enemies are going to know that it is Yah that is standing up for us. And so we need to stand down and let Yah stand up. Because at that point in time, when he begins to fight for us, if we hold our peace and let Yahuwah fight our battles, victory will be ours. That's the word, y'all. And with that, I will say shalom.